Today I'm going to make a workstation. Let's build that. So this is a much needed project that I've had uh, kind of brewing in my thoughts. I've been just trying to think about how I wanted to build it and I've been collecting things throughout the months and weeks and because I'm trying to build this thing pretty much for free so all the stuff you see I've pretty much gathered and had lying around but this is going to be a purpose-built station used for filming projects so the first thing I did was cut some PVC sheets and then I took some half inch plywood and cut these two grooves in it and that'll make a sort of channel slot so I can mount this on the back of the workstation and those PVC sheets will slide into it and create like a little shelf on the back once those were both cut to length I could screw the back one on just with some wood glue and drywall screws and I cut this to the same width as my mat the mat I'm using is a 24 by 18 cutting mat and uh, I'll have a link in the description I bought it off Amazon so once that was mounted you can see this is where I'm gonna put my power strip as well as my switch so now I'm just cutting a shim for the center spacer and this is gonna have a conduit pipe going through it and that conduit's gonna feed the track lighting in the top so I drilled a one inch hole to fit the conduit and I cut that down to about three inches and then matching that dado on the front I put two dados on the side that way I can fit my PVC sheets into the sides of it so when that's mounted in the center those sheets would be able to slide into the sides and then that conduit can go down through the top and then I just anchored that conduit holder bracket piece you want to call it just with some wood glue Once that was dry, you can see it's going to sit here on the back. And then I just cut up these little shims to make sure that my backspacing was the same on the top and the bottom. And then I figured out where my mat was going to sit, and I trimmed my platform to have a half-inch gap around each side of the mat. That's a sheet of walnut ply I had lying around from my uh, nightstand builds. So then I just decided to jump over to the camera rig. So. I took two sheets of half inch ply and I'm drilling a one inch hole and I think I spaced them five inches on center apart. Once those were drilled out I ripped them just over half so that the circles kind of tapered. I was planning on having them lock onto the uh, aluminum pipe. It didn't quite work but it still was a nice fit. So. Then I cut two strips of aluminum pipe, one inch, that were the same width as my board. So now these together will make up a sort of camera track. And then cut these little one inch strips of plywood and I can tack these in the four corners. And that just created a hollow sled. So I tacked each corner with one brad nail and that would allow me to get the dimensions right so I can square it. And once it was squared I could then tack it with the second brad and then that would keep it square. Now I'm just cutting the sides. I ended up going with like a six inch taper across the 20 inches up I think. I don't remember the exact measurements but I know I needed my camera to sit 20 inches above my board so that I could get a good perspective. So I figured out where the 20 inch mark was, figured out where center would be on the mat, and just kind of made my taper. I cut one, flipped it over, traced it, and used one diagonal cut to make two. And then I just added a round over to the front face. And I can glue this on the same way. I just used some wood glue and then clamped it in and pre-drilled and piloted some drywall screws. Before I mounted the other side I had to mark out where my slot is. So that bigger rectangle is going to be the inside of that little track I built and then I centered my bracket and then I drilled a hole 
and just used a bit on my router to carve out the inside where that plug insert would be. So I could then insert my plug in my clip and now I can screw that bracket on and that would give me enough clearance for that plug adapter to go through to the other side. Once that was done I could then mount that to the left side of my board using the same exact method I used before. Then I took some dowel that fit inside my one inch rod. I think it ended up being like 5 8 dowel. And I just cut some little plugs. And these plugs were going to get drilled into the sides on the inside. Uh, like I said, I think that line at the bottom is 20 inches up. And then I could just screw those on and kind of spread them apart and pop those two rods on. And that made my camera slide. Now I'm cutting this old track lighting down to fit in my box. I had to cut these coppers off so that this end cap would fit back in. And once that cap was on, the track lighting should fit right inside my box. I then took that conduit that's going to go down the back side and just carved out the front face. That way I could easily run my wires up. So when that conduit's down in the front, it has a place for my wiring to go up to the track light. So now I'm just cutting a, another board to make my track light mount, and I spaced it as wide as my box plus the sides. And then I mounted my track a little bit more to the back, just so it was as much clearance away from the camera rig as I could. Then I drilled this little spacer out, because that's going to be where the conduit comes up. And then I can center my cover, and I needed to drill a hole for the wires, so I figured out where that needed to go, unmounted my track, and then just drilled a one inch hole. And then I could put my track back on, and when I attached my wiring adapter piece, I could feed those wires up, and then put that little cap on to cover it. Once the cap was where it needed to be, I could then screw it on with just some little screws. And now that can get mounted on the top. So there's that shim I made earlier. So once this is on, you'll see where that shim comes in place. So I just spaced it off the back, the shim width, and then added a couple screws. Now I'm jumping back to those PVC sheets. I'm cutting out the square notches with my scroll saw so that I can put those plug inserts in. So once those were all squared up, I could then pop these plugs in. So I cut two on one side and then two on the other plus the hole for the switch. So these are kind of neat little plugs. You just line the wires up and then you press the cap in. You're supposed to use 16 gauge and this is 14 so it was a little tight but it seemed to work. I'll see if I can find these plugs I used and put it in the description. So now I got my switch wired in and then four sequential plugs and then I left a pretty good remaining wire. Now I'm just anchoring the conduit to the back side of the board. This is going to be the tube that the wiring goes up. And then I'm just gluing in those spacer blocks. I had to make sure they weren't too far to the side because my switch actually almost takes up that full depth. That switch is what determined how tall that was going to be. So now I can just feed that remaining wire up the conduit and then I could place my two strips in place. And now I'm just plugging in the plug on the outside to the switch. Now I can insert those little PVC sheets into the dados for that front piece, and then put that front piece in place and get the PVC into the back dados. It was a little bit tricky to get everything lined up, but once I got the screw holes in and got it screwed down, I could get all of those sheets to kind of worked into the dados. Once they were in the dados, they actually were pretty solid, so when you plug something in, it's not like they have a lot of a lot of movement. And then I just drilled two holes in the front side. These I didn't glue because if I ever have to go in for wiring repair. So now you can see where that spacer comes in. It goes over the conduit and then butts up against that. I might glue it in in the future. I haven't figured that out. And then I just connected my wiring coming out the tube to the wiring for the light. Uh, for now, this is just open. I'll have to come up with some sort of cap, but for now it works. Plug it in, 
I turned it on, it didn't work. Turns out the light bulbs that were in the track light were junk, so I put some LEDs in so it wouldn't get too hot in the box, and so there it is. I got four outlets in the back and one switch. The switch controls the outlets and the lights, so if you wanted, you could switch it around so the outlets were always hot and the lights were on the switch, but with the track lights, these ones are the ones I found, and they're a little bit on the big side, but they're removable, so I can always get some smaller ones if I find they're inhibiting, but for now it works. I also made this little sled jig for my phone, so I can place that on the top. And then when you put my phone on it, you can slide the jig back and forth within, and then you can move it left and right to kind of center it. And this project was built, like I said, it was purpose built so I can get some finite details on some smaller projects. I have a really big project coming up. It's going to take a while to film it, but it's going to be a multi part series and it's going to be pretty sweet. So stay tuned for that. That's the whole reason I built this rig so I can get some good detail, get some nice clean overhead shots. And with those lights, you can really focus on some details and with that little slide you get some really good range of motion so I can actually get over to this corner and zoom in and the light really gives you some good details on the pieces so if you look at the thumbnail you might find the teaser of the project coming up it's gonna be huge so thanks for watching I hope you guys like this project I know it's not my typical tutorial video but like I said, this was just really built for me to continue my projects. So thanks for watching and I hope you liked it. If you did, please give it a big thumbs up and share it with your friends. If you want to see more videos like this, feel free to subscribe to the channel, You and I DIY. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys on the next project.